Hi, Moy, Sophie Abbas here, and I think it's finally time for me to do this q and I've been um, doing a lot of work in this house and stuff, and um, thing, things are starting to come a little bit to a standstill, so this is a chance here for me to actually um, do this Q&A. So obviously I said that um, I was going to do this Q&A at the end of May, we're now here, so some of these questions I do, I've realised, reflect. Um, yeah, some of these questions do reflect, like back then but i'll try to sort of answer them to like how my mindset was back then i will try to answer them on that certain situation so with that let us go here with the first questions from um yusuf first of all i think you should do a 10 few ibis podcast someday not too sure yet but um i don't know might do but maybe if you stick to the end yeah i'll talk to you what i might do um, so his question is, so back in 2009, I got a Wii and I played a game called Victorious Boxers Revolution. It's like anime mixed with the Wii Sports Boxing and you can use the Wii Motes for the first person or the Wii Classic GameCube controller for the third person angle. Have you ever played it? Uh, no, I only played, um, I only played, uh, uh, um, the one for the PS2. Um, obviously, Victorious Boxers it is an anime. It's Hajime Oppo. It's one of my favourite animes of all time. Um, they even came up with one for the PS3 as the PS4 came out. So should, should have released it on the PS4. Never got to play that one. But I did play the one on PS2. But I haven't played this one on the Wii. It sounds quite different. It was actually like Wii Sports Boxing. I did that. Actually, well, I think I saw something about it. But no, I didn't actually play that one, though. I can imagine it was a great game. Need some more Hajime Oppo anime as well, boy. So here's the second question. Do you think Sony dropped the big ball time with the PlayStation Home, a concept that was ahead of its time and could have had a bigger connection between Sony and advertisers? For example, they could have promoted a commercial for Domino's Pizza and Pizza Ho in PS Home and um, for a special meal and then you order it from Domino's and you leave a code to a demo for a game not out yet and not on PS Store or maybe a time exclusive DLC for a game. I don't understand why they remain in the beta version until it die. Yeah, um, you're, you know, you're right. I think they did drop the ball. But the thing is, I don't think they, they dropped the ball because of the concept. I think they dropped the ball because they took long to bring the concept out. I felt the idea was absolutely terrific because at the time they were doing this, that's when Habba Hotel was getting all this bigness and everything. Everyone was all doing Habba Hotel and that. It was big. It was getting, going pretty far and everything and all that, you know. They were starting to basically bring social media as if, like, it's an outside, inside sort of game. Instead of doing Facebook where we just pass on stuff and everything, share stuff, it's like, uh, yeah, instead of doing it like that, they, they just, um, the, the, this this was actually uh, something different. And the concept at the time was great. You know, what was also good, you just talked about um, the advertisers. I could advertise my music because one of the things that you they said that you could do in the press conference is you could actually take a picture and put the picture on a poster in your house. That'd have been brilliant, you know, and you could promote. I could have promoted my music. You could have, you're able to put a jukebox there and put whatever music you want to put. I could have I could have promoted my music. I could have done stuff like that. Those were so much good ideas that they could have done. Domino's would have probably jumped onto something like that as well easily so but what happened was the beta came out and you couldn't take the pictures and put them on the thing you couldn't do a few of the things that they said it they could do and it took so long to get to that position that people got off it now people got bored of it it, it stopped that's what kind of ruined it they took long why did they take so long in the beta i agree with you it took long and um that domino's meal thing with that that would give you a code for DLC and stuff like that. Yeah, that would have been a cool idea, I suppose. That would have worked. All right, so let's go to John Jets. Have you fallen out with music, Tim? I used to listen to your tracks, your tracks 10 years ago. Um, I did kind of fall out with music, but there is a there is a plan for me to come back. There is a, there, there, I do feel like maybe I could come back. Everyone has always told me yeah, that a different atmosphere could be a, a like different environments could be helpful to that sort of situation and um remember in my not my last video the video before i spoke about um 
a house that I have planned that's going very well at the moment. You know, until it's 100%, I ain't going to say yet. But um, if I do get that place, my studio will be in a complete separate room to all my other rooms. And things will probably feel a little bit different. Maybe motivation may come. Maybe I can go back to learning some new things, trying new things, experimenting with new things. And maybe I could get back onto music fully. But then there's also the situation that, hey, I did technically do a little bit of, maybe not, I wouldn't say a lot of music. But if you go to my video, which is um, Naina interview Zapdi, I say Naina talks about her interview with Zapdi, that melody that I had on the loop, that was my melody. I made that specifically for that. So that was something technically recent I made. And then if you look at the 3D model I made, that M8W trophy, which was a golden um, um, Griffin uh, 3D model, I I put a, I made a pad with a couple sound effects in that. That's um, that's music. That's technically new stuff there for me. I know you want proper actual new music though, and everything that I haven't done music in a long while. So there is the question of do I have it? Do I still have it? Um, but I will try again. That's what I'm going to say right now. I will try again. So let's hope that comes out great. And Mr. Scorpion 360X, hey, how have you been? I've been watching a, video, a lot of your videos these past few days along with your street, Streets of Rage 4 stream. And I just realized I've been watching your videos for 10 years now. I'm glad that I'm still watching them today. You're legitly one of my favorite YouTubers and I hope you keep making more videos. Yes, man, thanks very much for that. I really appreciate that. And I really do want to get back to making videos constantly. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I want to get back into those days. Like I said already, man, hopefully going back, going to this new place will help give more motivation, give me more chance to work just on more vlogs. So hopefully I'll get that motivation, just keep it there, boy. But I will, I'm going to try. I'm going to keep trying there. And here's, here are my questions. What is your overall opinion of Tecmo's Dead or Alive series? I want to know what you think of the characters, the soundtrack, and overall the gameplay in general. And the stuff you don't like about the series. Well, um, when it comes to the gameplay, I feel as if like it's quite limited compared to Tekken. Tekken's got so much complexity. Com some, it's so complex. It's got a lot of um, stuff. Uh, when I compare um, Dead or Alive and Tekken, I usually like when a game has a bit of arcadey style in there. Tekken has that perfect balance of arcadey style and technical fighting. Whereas Dead or Alive just seems to be fully, fully, fully arcadey, which is good, but maybe a bit too much. So some of the animations just look a bit choppy. Like, I think I, I remember watching um, Dead or Alive 5, and I remember, you know, the, the animations just looking very choppy and precise and too, not very, um, just not very as fluid as how Tekken is. Um, as for the characters, I definitely like the, um, I definitely like a few of the characters. I like, um, Jack, I'm sorry, Zach's design, you know, he's got a very good rate design. I like Bayman and, um, Bass as well. Those are very, very good characters. Um, soundtrack, funny enough, I've, I've not heard any of the soundtrack. I don't think I've heard much of the soundtrack. I think when I did try Dead or Alive back then, I wasn't really concentrating on the soundtrack that much, maybe because the song may not have been interesting for me at that time i mean now i've spoken to a few people who love dead or alive and who plays dead or alive and they always talk about dead or alive and what they like in it and they've never ever mentioned the music so i don't know if they do like the music as much as tekken players love tekken music because when i chat to tekken players we will talk about how good tekken is we'll talk about that and there'll be one moment where we'll definitely at least talk about the um music we're definitely going to talk about the music 100 percent um, and the second question, your music 2000 video got me intrigued. When you finished the music, it sounded so no nostalgic. Will you consider coming back to making music again? I also love a video of you making more music for music 2000 again. Thanks. I hope you're doing wonderful and take care. All right. So you say, um, my music 2000 video got you intrigued. Which one? Is this the one where I made music for an hour? Is that a one? Was that a one? Because that obviously wasn't finished. That was just an experiment. 
Um, as I said already to John, yeah, I do plan to make an attempt to come back to music again. Hopefully, I can. Hopefully, I still have it, and I can make what I used to make, and maybe a better. You know, I like to try new things. Also, what could also be good is I could. Now you know you brought that up. It gives me a bit more ideas. I could try and stream music. Who knows? It would be a cool thing if I could stream music. Um, will I make music from Music 2000 again? Probably. I'm not too sure. Uh, I could do, I suppose. Maybe, if not Music 2000, at least Music 3000 or MTV Music Generator. So, um, yeah, got, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but I will think, we'll think about that. But yeah, I do want to come back to music as well. So Bellamy Fanboy asks, um, would you ever believe that your racist, the Resident Evil 5 racist video became so popular like it did? It got me to sub to you. No, I did not. I did not think that would get as big as it got. I am so shocked at how that video did. I remember recording it in the morning, uploading it, and seeing a few comments straight away but I couldn't read them at the time because I had to go shopping with my mum. And while I was going shopping for my mum, I was the celebrity of the day. I think I got the most discussed video in the whole of UK. It was the most viewed video in the most viewed, the gaming related video in the UK for the whole day. I think it was in the top 20 most viewed uh, gaming video in the world that day. I was like, I could, I mean, I knew, yeah, that the, that there were, I was going to get comments that would back me up. I knew there was going to be people who would agree with me, yeah, that the game's not a racist. It's just something different. It was just something, but it's, just, and it's in, yeah, well, I'm not going to go through that again, but um, I knew, yeah, there was going to be some comments that backed me, but I did not think I'd get, I got bare video responses to that video as well. I got, that video went crazy. That was, that was the video that did start me. So I'm pretty shocked about that. I'm pretty shocked, you know, but uh, yeah, man, that was, that, that was memories right there. If mental time travel was possible, meaning you send your consciousness and soul back in time to inhabit your younger, your younger self, would you do it? You'd retain all your knowledge and experience of everything in 2020, but you would essentially take over your past body. <laughs> It'd be like cheating, really, because I could um, take, you know, think about um, the situation of how I was like, how I could think of the situation, how back then I would um, always listen to what other people would tell me, which could not put me down or anything like that. I could sort of ignore that now. Music wise, I could if I could have gave myself all the music knowledge I had back then or all the animation knowledge I had back then or... Um, just editing knowledge, just the design knowledge, everything I just do today, if I could get back there, it would be kind of cool. Because people say that my music would have been cool if it was released. It would have probably done a lot better if it was released in the 80s or the 90s. Maybe as my as my character as well that I'm doing projects with. If I was released all those in the 80s and 90s, it probably would have done a lot better. I'll still try ahead and do them today, but... Um, it probably would have been a lot more easier if I did release them back then. So it would have been cool if I had, if my past self had the knowledge and experience that I, I did have today. So yeah, um, I bet I guess I could do it. I I guess I would do it. You know, yeah. So that would be something cool. Um, now the SWAT demon says, yeah, hey, hey, Tempest, um, SWAT demon from and AK fired hard from um, Facebook. This question is a depressing one. Since the recent passing of your close ones, as you share with us on your YouTube and Facebook, how do you handle grief and tips on coping with a loss of a family member? Right, so, um, yes. Uh, well, the first thing to say, well, what I, what, how I would cope with it, is I have to get it out there. You saw my video, so yeah, about my mum. I had to put that video out there. I felt like I tried to hold that one in and it, I felt like I could not move forward with anything. I couldn't move forward. It had, it's like a video just had to be done. I had to get my, out there. I had to get my thoughts out there. I had to just let it out there. I wasn't even planning to cry in the video, but it, it happened. And so everyone saw what had happened. But uh, that video had to be put out there. 
that was a video that just that was that was, that's the one way I handle it you know so you know you just don't bottle things you just can't bottle things like that everyone's sometimes wondering my cut my cousins were wondering how am I doing a lot of my family was wondering how I was doing my video so yeah about my mum answered those questions so um yeah that's one way of dealing with it I mean it's still quite hard today as well because every time I listen to something that I knew my mum liked I think about her even if I listen to something that I knew my mum didn't like and always used to take the mick out of um I think about her again I always will keep thinking about her it's nearly a year since my mum passed away and um it's really you know it's still gonna hurt it's gonna hurt me for the rest of my life you know but uh but i but the thing is people handle things differently so i can't really give tips on that because most people are more private than me obviously here i am a guy on youtube and i always talk about my life on youtube i always talk about my life on facebook and everything like that yeah i'm always the person who brings it out there if if I lose someone close, I may speak about it on YouTube. If I, I mean, I spoke about my dad on, on YouTube. I spoke about my mum on YouTube. So, um, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the type of person I am. I'm the person who brings it out there. So that's how I cope with it. You know, another way I guess I can cope with it as well is, um, is knowing that they're not in pain anymore. Because this time last year i my mum was downstairs in a specially made hospitalized bed and she couldn't even come upstairs anymore so so you know what i mean uh that was her in pain and one way to cope with it is just always remind yourself they're not feeling that pain anymore then they my mum and dad are together again they're you know they are they are together that's 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 the best thing about it they are together again you know so that's all I can, that's, that's that's the only thing i can do to focus that's, that's all i can that's all i can help you with i'm hoping um you're just asking me that yeah just out of curiosity and not if, if i'm hoping that no nothing's bad happening in your life and the second question was will you will, will you be ever in a oh yeah, I think you put a typo there. Will you be ever be in a Robert Storms video? <laughs> Will I ever be in a Robert Storms video? Um, well, I've actually been in three. We we did a review on a Street Fighter Cross Tekken. We had a match on a Street Fighter Four, and I was in the intro of one of his videos where he we played on Tekken Six. So, but he's removed all those videos now. He's removed a lot of his his, his, his stuff. So, um, um, yeah, we do know each other, but um, he's much more busier guy now. He's a proper bigger YouTuber than he ever was. Obviously, he's completely shut up there, and um, I don't think he has time to do a video with me now. You know. I mean, in a sense of what we like can be quite a bit separate as well, really. I mean, I don't even know if he's even into Tekken anymore. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind being in another, in, a, in, a, in doing a collab with him, but um, I'm not too sure if he's um, up for it at the moment. So we'll have to um, see about, about that. And uh, we are now going to go to Tiffany Scott's. Hi Temp, this is Squeaky4CC here, if you remember me. Yeah man, I do. And um, first question here is, ever thought of riding a motorbike? It would be cool if you get your license and have meetups where we'd ride out. <laughs> Reminds me of um, Karate Kid and um, Cobra Kai. <laughs> you know, um, unfortunately, yeah, um, I'm never going to ride a motorbike. It's not my type of thing, yeah. Um, I've never, I've never really been a bike person. I'm a, I'm a car person, unfortunately. And I remember my dad telling me when he used to be a biker and he told me a, a story about a crash he had and, and, um, 
you know, I feel like, uh, nah, it's not, it's definitely not for me, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, there's meetups, if people want to do meetups, I can do meetups and stuff in a minute, but not, but uh, we don't, it doesn't have to be a bike to do meetups, but uh, ride out is definitely not that situation. Um, now, second question, ever thought of joining TikTok and doing some videos? It would be awesome to see you on there. I think it'll get you some exposure also. Now, when you asked that question at the time you did, I actually was um, seeing TikTok here, TikTok here, TikTok all over the place. I'm like, right, what is this TikTok stuff here? Yeah? So you know what I did as soon as I saw your question? I actually went ahead and just made a TikTok account. Now I made it, I installed TikTok on my phone, but I didn't quite see how to, how to work, work it. It, it seems a bit weird, a bit different to YouTube and Instagram, um, what I end up, and I get notifications to watch other people's videos here and there almost every single day, I try to turn the notifications off, but it's still just carried on coming through, and then later on I heard, yeah, that TikTok was, was going to get banned, I don't know if that's true or not, but I heard it was, but I uninstalled the um, app, if I see a good reason for me to go back onto it again, I, I will, I'm not too sure what type of content I'll put on that, it seems to be where you do, where people just do weird, funny videos and everything like that. Um, not too sure what I would do for that, but we'll have to see about that. But yes, I actually am on TikTok. Um, in that Insanity54 asks, how has Taekwondo changed your life? Um, well, it's one of the things that helps me become a little bit more happier because it's, it's another community that I'm part of. You know, a lot of people who like me and um, willing to teach me what I need to know and um, help me on my weaknesses. They're very good people. And um, obviously, I know I can kick a lot more better than um, I could all, in all these years ago. You know, there's information about the kicks and things about um, Taekwondo that is... Um, just amazing really that uh that it's one, one thing that also I can help with as well is when I do references for my um art art commissions when I do like when I get a, I get the partially complete Zaytdi model I pose him in a way that and I get the artist drawing him you saw that in my um RK stick documentary you know Taekwondo has helped out, helped me out with uh, making these poses look as dying look as perfect as possible attention to detail you know if i didn't um, do taekwondo then the flying kick that you see on the um, arcade stick would have looked a lot different than what it is now you know a few other uh yeah a few other things that if it wasn't for taekwondo and mma um the knowledge that i have today it wouldn't have looked the way it are now. So yeah, there is a lot of um, change. There is a lot of ways it did help me in that, that sort of sense. And it can help you be responsible as well. It, help you, um, you know, it helps your discipline a bit. You know, some of my self-discipline has probably gone a little bit though recently. That's why I've not really been doing as much as I want to do. But, um, um, but it's helped me gain a little bit of flexibility and I want to, go more onto that situation and it's definitely helped my kicks so that's what I can say about that one and what are your thoughts on the return of Killer Bean I'm absolutely happy I'm, I was shocked to see him come out of nowhere and just do it he's got more new cartoons and more in the process I like how um, he's making Killer Bean actually do vlogs of his own that's such a cool idea you know um, there's so much uh, it's given me so much inspiration to really push more with Zate D you know, I've always wanted to do cartoons and things back in my day and it's never come through, but I, it, these things just constantly inspire me to push again, try again, keep going, chase it until you, to chase it until your grave or something, you know what I mean? So yeah, um, bloody happy about that. I can't wait to see um, more of it and I am going to donate a bit to his Patreon as well. I, I definitely want to do something about that. And Wormio BH asks, what do you think of the Streets of Rage 4 overall? 
can compare it to the old games. Right, well, there's always going to be a, a, the, the inch, the beautiful cliche. There's going to be the, the charm that Streets of Rage 2 is always going to have that's just miles better than any other of the Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage 3 was a great game as well, but I prefer Streets of Rage 2, I always preferred that. Streets of Rage 2 has a big thing close to me because it was something in Streets of Rage 2, what helped gave me the name 10th Uibis. I'm sure a lot of people know about that. You know, um, so Streets of Rage 4 though, I gotta say overall, when it comes to gameplay, the game is the best game. It is much, 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 much better than um, than all the others. Streets of Rage 2, I already spoke about that being a fantastic game. There was one thing that bothered me in Streets of Rage 2, and that was there wasn't that much proper good solid combos. You know, what was also what's good about Streets of Rage 4 is that you knock them, you knock them on the bounce, you do that, like sort of hit them, they go flying, and you can juggle them. And there's such great, different, brilliant combos that you've got to work hard with. You know, one of the best thing I love about Streets of Rage 4 is the fact that. Um, damn, my nose keeps itching me, boy. The best thing about Streets of Rage 4, one of the best type of games that I always like is games that are easy to play, hard to master. And that game is fully on that. You know, there are some nice, brilliant, disgusting combos that I've seen online that I can't do yet. I know if I practice them, I probably will. And it's these type of combos which will help people do the harder levels, the harder difficulties like Mania and get S ranks on Mania. Those, those are the people that are turning that game inside out, boy. Those are the get those are the ones that are smashing, it's just killing it, boy. So, but yeah, Streets of Rage 4 is, is the best game, yeah, out of the lot. Do you know what would make the game even more phenomenal for me? Is if they bring Rue back. They need to bring Rue. Rue is my favourite character in Streets of Rage 3. And that, and it's like they brought Rue back, but it made him a bartender. I want to play as Rue again. Um, that's one thing. One thing though they did that that um, Streets of Rage Four doesn't have, but it's not it's not that deep for me. But it's a little it's a little bit mm, for me is the fact that they taken out the characters that helped me that I based that but helped me on my name. You know, it was like how could you take those characters out? But the, people are saying that there's, they're they're confident there's going to be DLC later on and they'll bring all these characters back in. So let's hope they they do. It'd be kind of cool. Um, so number two, what, have you played the classic Mega Man games? If so, which was your favorite? Also, you should stream them if you love them. Um, yeah, Mega Man 1 is my favorite because that's the one I did have. I did have a Mega Man 2 as well, but I've played Mega Man 1 so many times. That was my, that was my game. That was the game that I just couldn't stop playing. Um, I should stream them. Um, well, I need to, I'll have to set up my Nintendo for streaming but then i know yeah that uh on the switch they have a nintendo game which um has some of the games on it i could stream that but then but recently i what i want to be streaming recently now is um obviously tekken i want to start streaming arms one day maybe even smash brothers maybe even Pokémon tournament i've been doing a couple of um splatoon streams here and there and I ain't gonna lie, I've also got into that new game, Fall Guys, which is pretty funny. I may stream that as well. So I may not stream a Mega Man, but um, yeah, but some of those classics are really brilliant. The music for those games are amazing. And Venom3421, it's been a long time, Temp. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, man, it has been a long time. You know, uh, what games are you looking forward to playing this year? Now, if it, now, if you had um, asked that, now if I had uh, done this video in May, I, I would have said um, UFC 4, because i got UFC 4 now. Right. Right here. So that would have been a game I'd been looking forward to playing. Um, obviously, um, um, PS5 is uh, coming out, and I spoke about some of the games I wanted to play. That um, Racing Destruction All-Stars game, I'd like to play that. 
I'd like to um, play uh, the new Abe's the new Abe game coming out. That game looks like it's going to be pretty sick. You know. Sadly, I'm so behind on Resident Evil and all those other Resident Evil games here that even though there's this new Resident Evil Village games coming out, I'm absolutely not even ready for that yet because, man, yeah, I need to uh, I need to get back onto those games as well. So those are games that I'm um, looking forward to. Um, not sure what else are um, is coming out this year that I'm hyped for. Yeah, I think that's I think that's probably gonna be it for that really. So second, um, do you think that the guest characters Noctis and Negan in Se Tekken Seven are out of place? I personally don't mind them, but Noctis does look like he should be in Soul Calibur, and Negan should be in Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I've always said that. I, I've I've said that yeah a lot on a lot of people's streams. I think you know. I mean, I understand the good side of it. We've got more Final Fantasy players playing Tekken. And a lot of um, Walking Dead people and fans have come over to Tekken now. So it is good for those sort of reasons. But I just feel as if like these two characters are way out of place. Very weird. But then, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, this is Tekken. Well, in Tekken, we have a fucking bear. We've got robots. We've got um, a guy who's in a wheelchair. And we've got a cyber... Um, We've got the we've got the cyber android guys and everything. Like that. Yeah, we've got we had a kangaroo. We've got a dinosaur. We've had a wooden dummy. <laughs> you know, did I say a guy in a wheelchair? I meant to say a guy who hasn't got legs. I meant to put it that way. You know, we've had everything in Tekken, so I suppose in that certain sense they could be in the game. But I I just prefer though when when the game does seem to stick a bit more to like. A martial arts direction combat 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 sports disciplines like direction that's why i prefer i like akuma and geese being in them tekken you know because they are proper proper martial artists they have their own brilliant great styles and i feel that it still fits the boundary of tekken it may i know a lot of people may hate them because of the meter and stuff and everything and how the way they fight may not they may, people may not like that, but I still like how they work in, in Tekken, to be honest. So it's all cool for me. Um, so now we're going to go to um, Silenced uh, PP7. Did you see Tony... Do, do you see Tony Ferguson bouncing back from his devastating loss to Justin Gaethje? He took a lot of damage and is up there in age, but I think Tony would be Khabib's toughest matchup of the top five high lightweights. Um, I'll be honest, it's kind of true. He did take a bad beating from Justin Gaethje. He got smashed up. I had a feeling Justin Gaethje would be a problem for him, but not that much of a problem. Can he bounce back? Well, I know he's um, lost to um, other guys. I remember him losing to Michael Johnson. He bounced back, became a much, much stronger fighter after that, beating everyone and all that. He's a really terrific fighter. So I reckon he could bounce back from it. I mean, how old is he? I don't think, I mean, he's not, he's not that old, is he? I swear he's in them, like, mid, maybe um early, mid-30s. I swear he's not that. Okay, okay maybe. Okay, I'm actually, someone in mid-30s is actually quite old for an MMA fighter. Um... Nah, I'm not too sure. I'm sure he could. Uh, I'm sure he could. Um, he could bounce back, you know. And yeah, you're right. He is. He probably is still one of the toughest matchups for um, Khabib. I think Khabib, yeah, might be looking down at Justin Gaethje. I'm not too sure. Can't really see any of those fights, to be honest. So, second question: What would be your dream non-fighting Tekken Mortal Kombat um, Street Fighter games, e.g., Death by Degrees? For Nina and Mortal Kombat Shining Monks for Liu Kang. Um, for next gen systems, mine would be a Yoshimitsu hack and slash game set in Japan and a Scorpio Sub Zero action inspired, action adventure inspired by MK11's Fire and Ice chapter. Um, well, uh, yeah, I w 
I would definitely like to um, have a king type, a, a, a game for king, obviously. You know, they can make a storyline with king, no problem. You know, he fights here for, um, you know, for the orphanage and everything like that. You know, he fights that. And it'd be cool to just, I mean, it's always cool when you have a wrestler in those beat em up on the street type games. It's always good when you have a wrestler there. And I feel like um, King is the best wrestler in any fighting game, period. And if they bring all that sort of concept to a beat em up game where he's using it on the streets and stuff, you know, beating up guys, maybe one level could be where he would face, he has to go into a ring and face off against another bigger wrestler than him and all that. And, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of um, ideas you could do with that, but yeah, anything to do with King, yeah, that'd be probably my um, um, dream non-fighting game to do with Tekken, more combat, a Street Fighter, you know. And um, let's go to Striker two two fifty. Um, what do you enjoy about the furry fandom? Um, you know, um. And I like the community. I like the um, I like Anthro characters in general because you can always make characters and do so much different designs. Do so much. You can always push the boundary of art with them. With them. I always I always looked at it like if you if I was to make a, a brand new character, a brand new fictional character, if I made him human, he'll be limited. If I make him an Anthro character, it'll be great because then. You've got so many animals out there. There's still animals that people don't even know today. Some species that people don't recognize. They, we could do we could do the, all of these sort of species. And then, then people push art even more by combining species, which is what I've done with Zapdi. And, um, you know, you can also make them all random colors, different colors and everything and all that, you know. And I've I mean, you saw you know, how I did you know, on um, boxing um, gorilla day. You saw my new boxing gorilla um, Anoga, you know. And so, yeah, th there's a uh, there's so much you can do, especially when also with um certain with certain um, Amphro styles, you can draw them with planty grade or digital grade um, legs and feet. So you, how many digits on the hand on the how many digits on the fingers and um, feet do they have? You can, you can so much art you can, you can so much creativity and all that um and uh the second question here is do you still like seeing art of your first art no matter who he faces now from that question i realize um something that um i was i was speaking with um guapi um twy um recently from that question, I can tell you think here that Zaytdi is my first sonar. Zaytdi isn't actually my first sonar, you know. Um, I haven't actually created my first sonar properly yet, but my first sonar is going to be Tenfuibis, you know. I'm basically going to be the commentator and interviewer in Zaytdi's world. That's the, that's where my project's going to be. But yeah, um, I need to make my first sonar, you know. Might even get a first suit, who knows? You know, but uh yeah, um do I like seeing art of Zaytdi, no matter who he faces, because that's obviously what he was referring to. Yeah, I don't mind seeing um I don't mind seeing art of Zaytdi. I don't mind a lot of people have um, done a few free arts already, and I don't mind seeing him face who he faces. But um yeah, man, uh um yeah, man, the Amphro community is all, definitely a welcoming community as well, boy. All right. And Air Cages now. Um, he asks, have you ever thought about becoming a full-time YouTuber? These days, there's so many ways to monetize your work. You wouldn't need to be signed to a company or a, lab or a label to, to make a living doing creative work on YouTube or streaming. Yes, 100%. hundred <laughs> percent. You know... There is many ways to monetize your work. And to be fair, it's not as easy as I felt it could have been 
But actually, yeah, I, I think actually, I think it was more easier back in the time. I think I have messed my chance up. I think I've lost my chance. You know, I remember some people who were on the same boundaries as me. Like, I had three thousand subscribers at one point. They had three thousand. They, they had three thousand. We were all just about like this, and I kind of stopped. And some of these people today got like twenty thousand. Some are thirty thousand. Some are really, some are just sprint up there so um i could have probably been to some of those people it's unfortunate that i i let that i let that opportunity slip so it's going to be more harder to be there now i mean i notice most full-time youtubers what they do these days they they make videos constantly at least if not once a day at least once every two days they, they've got to have uploaded at least loads of videos in one week so what they do is they all they usually stream a lot and they upload their streams to um youtube I may need to start doing that. It's quite hard, really, because one of the things I'm always wondering is, all of my old school YouTube fans like yourself, you know, would you like to see streams? of Those ain't always what I used to put on YouTube. I didn't used to just always put streams on YouTube. People liked my vlogs and stuff like that. So it's quite hard to think, what do I, how do I continue this? But, but, if, but, but to answer your question, a hundred billion percent, I'd love to be a full-time YouTuber. It would actually help me out. It would help me out and everything and all that. You know, obviously I've got a, a job, a, a part-time job. You know, if if um if I was a full-time YouTuber, I would have more time to make more YouTube videos and on and obviously maybe more time to work on my projects as well. That when I eventually finish, I'd like to put on YouTube as well. So, you know, if obviously, yeah, being a YouTube, you, being a full time YouTuber, I'll say it right now, I'll admit it right now, yeah, that is the job I want. That is the job I want. Full time streamer, full time YouTuber, that is what I would like to have. So one day I'm going to really kick it up a notch and I'm going to just slap myself in the face and really just get onto it. Hopefully you guys will push me as well. Second question. I'd like to rewatch some of your old music gigs. Out of all the gigs you performed, which one was your most favourite and why? Do you have any funny stories that we don't know about? Cheers. Which one was my favourite? Boy, that's a, how do I rank that, man? My first gig in Cambridgeshire was legend. And everyone saw how hyped I was at the end of that. Uh, I love the um, one in uh, in Brighton. I think it was called Hello Japan. The one in Brighton. That was amazing. The atmosphere was great on that one. It was so good to just do it out in the open, you know, under the canopy and everything. That it was so, it was so different. I was like, whoa! I enjoy, I enjoyed that. Uh, hmm. That was an amazing, that was an amazing um, gig as well. So it's out, it's out of those two. My first Cambridge gig and um, the Brighton one, you know. Maybe just based on how I acted in both of them, you might as well just say the, the Cambridge one because you all saw that how I ended that. So um, that's probably that. Do you have any funny stories that you don't know about? Well, okay, so let's put this one in. Um, so in the Cambridge one, you saw at the end, yeah, that I took off my um, jumper. You saw I took off my jumper, and uh, obviously I went off stage, and everything that everyone saw me shirtless. Uh, I, I walked past a girl, and then she went like, "Ooh!" <laughs> Maybe that was another opportunity that I probably missed out on. I mean, the funny thing is, right, is I was skinny back then, so I'm surprised. I was skinny there, man. Did that turn her on? I was skinny. <laughs> uh, that's that's one story there. So there you go. <laughs> All right, now JSJ two three. What are your top fa top five favorite anime series of all time? Hajime Oppo, Kengan Ashura, Baki the Grappler, Tiger Mask. I 
been watching some animes recently, and um, some are good, some aren't really all that. Um, one anime that looks interesting is The God of High School, but I was going to watch that, but King of Kiss anime is down there, isn't it? Uh, so, um, just have to say Dragon Ball. I do love Dragon Ball Super. I did like Dragon Ball Z when it was out and everything. I always liked those, the Dragon Ball series. So, yeah, that's all I have to say there. And um, um, who are your favourite up-and-coming UFC fighters at the moment? Some of them, I can't remember their names, but there was this... Oh, there was this there was this black guy who was on a show recently and I really completely forgot his goddamn name. I'm only gonna just sort of remember when I just see his face. You know, he had a pretty cool style. You know. But yeah, he's um yeah. Damn it, I actually forgot the names of some of the fighters, but there are some, but I forgot the names, so I'm sorry to that's so I can't really answer that question properly. I'm very sorry about that. Is there? The older I get, the more my memory is going. No! <laughs> All right, Nathan Washington. Hi, Tim Fiobis, how are you doing? So what do you think about more combat mythology? Myth, 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 oh, God, I'm so bad at words of this on these. Um, myth, um, Sub-Zero, if you played it before and why. Um, I feel like the game, yeah, was... Uh, Not too good. I think they were too early in um, trying. Um, what they're trying. I mean, it's okay. I mean, they did a uh, some cool st stuff, but but you know these type of games. You know, I would always love it more better if it was co op and stuff. So um, I did just play it a few times. I didn't actually, I didn't actually like uh, play it proper. I did play a bit of it. I think I played the Special Forces more than that one. The game was just okay at best. That's all, that's what I'm going to say. You know, Charlotte Monks is the one that killed it. That's the one that was the best. I noticed you um you put question one there, but you haven't put a second question. Uh, did I did I um did I accidentally miss that part? No, man. Looks like yeah, it, it looks. It looks like um, you you only just asked one question. Oh, was it the fact that why was your question too? Was that was that the case? Um, but yeah, man. Um, uh, well, answered that one there. And um, as two two nine four asks, what have you been doing in in lockdown to keep yourself busy? Well, see, that's a hard question to answer. Answer because the way I see it, I haven't been in lockdown. You know, I was never technically in lockdown. Yeah, we all was in the lockdown, but I work as a pizza delivery. So I still got to go out. I still got to go out and do my job. I still was driving down, you know, because of the lockdown, I just had to have a, a sheet saying that I'm not outside doing for, for no reason. I actually have a sheet because I'm in lockdown. So... So technically, so not I'm in lockdown. So I'm working in Domino's. Sorry. So technically, yeah, um, I was allowed out. I must admit, when I was driving down the roads, boy, they were empty as hell. It was such easy. I was able to deliver so much more pizzas in a day than to the thanks to the lockdown. But um, yeah, uh, so keeping myself busy, I was still working. I was still doing Tekken. I was still. Um, yeah, I was still um, doing. Yeah, I was still doing my normal thing really during the lockdown. Then again, I was also um, starting to make. Um, I was starting to do uh, work in the house, starting to get rid of um, things that I don't need because I knew that one day I was going to be moving out. It's taken a long time because obviously look where we are now. But um, yeah, this lockdown is more or less not been a lockdown for me. I know it's been for you, but not for me. <laughs> so, second, what place, location will you visit when you went first, when the lockdown is over? So, obviously, he asked that in May. We were in the lockdown at the time. Um, well, like I said, uh, I was still, I had not worked in lockdown. 
But I will say when the shops started opening up, what 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 did I do when it when what what where did I visit first? Uh hmm. Can't really say I remember where I've actually visited. I mean I guess the only places I've been visiting is um families. A few a few families, a few few maybe a couple of friends' houses. Um obviously I was always doing my shopping and, uh, and those are places I suppose. Uh Oh, wait a minute, I just clocked. You said what place or location, as in like going out. Yeah. Well, if that's the case here, yeah, then the place was Basildon because, because I'm, I was looking at my um, possible new house, which I'm praying that I do get. So, so guys, just keep, keep your fingers crossed for me, please. That's the last question. So, been a long time since we've done, done Q&A like this. So guys, I'd like to ask you guys a question right now, yeah? Do you think it's worth me making a 10th UIBIS Discord? I know so many people have got their own little Discords and stuff and they've got cool stuff there where they show videos that's going out and stuff and discuss things and all that. And also can have a few little chats with their subscribers and everything and all that. Some of them at least anyway, you know. Do you, I mean, do many of you use the Discord? Because if, cause if none of you really use Discord, then there's no point in me making my Discord like when no one's going to really come to it. If I made my Discord, would you guys come to it? I'll try and make, I'll try and add content in there. Maybe art and blah, 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 and everything and all that. And then we'll get to share with each other things if I make um, channels and stuff like that. So that's, so, um, and of course I could also discuss music. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Discord? 10th of Ibis Discord? Yeah, guys, so that's the end of the Q&A. Um, my next video, I have to go back here to the Ice Blues 30 day, 30 challenge. You know, obviously I haven't, I've been trying to keep on par with that video as well, because I thought like it's such a good, it's such a good topic so i've been so i've got to get back onto that there's still 20 more videos to do so i will get back to this hopefully i can finish all of that in this year it'd be so funny that it's supposed to be a 30 day challenge although he did give the rule that you can do it whenever and, it, and i don't even get it done in one year how funny would that be but yes i will come back here to that so um yeah that, that that'd be the next videos i also got a lot of other videos planned as well which I need to um, I need to bring up as well. So hopefully when I get all of these things going on, that will help grow this channel a bit more and maybe I can get into the position that I said that I said I'd like to be, being a big um, full-time YouTuber. Let's see how all that goes. Uh, so I also want to thank all the yous because it was nice seeing some of these good old school names there. It's nice to know that you guys still support me after all these years. Man, 2006 I opened this YouTube channel. 2007 is when I started uploading videos to this. We're in 2020 now. Look at me. Not getting any younger. Thanks very much, guys, though. I'll speak to you all later. Love who you are.